I feel honored to be here. Actually, this is my second speech, uh, or my second presentation at AWE. I was here exactly a year ago. Um, as context, just to let you know how wacky I am, um, my graduate school thesis in 1989, I designed the world's first virtual reality simulation game for family therapy, where you could design your parents and your siblings as rich CGI characters using basically scripting theory. You could give those characters an unfolding as if they were real. I'm anally retentive. Could you fix that? I guess not. I'll just stand over here like that. So, um, and, uh, and then I actually allowed you to design external circumstances by which to watch the family un ecology unfold over time. Because if you had two siblings and two parents, you were not considered an individual in a family. You're all locked together in a single behavior. That's when I was starting to think about the power of immersion. So let me move forward here, and I'll look at um, my notes. Um, Homo sapiens, wise humans. We're the only survivors of what seems to be now about four or five different competing hominoids. They found a new one just a, a couple weeks ago. Why do we survive? Well, we have many things. You've heard of many of the ways that we speak, uh, and we survive. We're different. We stand upright. Our children take 20 years to, uh, to, to become free. Uh, my nine-year-old is accelerating that. He's uh, acting right now as if he's 15. Uh, I'm hoping this is not recorded. This will come back and haunt me. Um, we wear clothing. We speak. But the thing that really differentiates us is our brain, our ability to think, reason, uh, be moral. But most interestingly, uh, the brain allows us to share information by telling stories. Stories are very powerful, powerful capacity. In fact, the Soviets realized that besides the bullet, the most important part of life that they could control was the story. So they invented a new kind of cinema called montage. How many people here know what montage is? OK, good. I'll stop talking. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I try to be humorous, and it doesn't work very often. Can I, can I give you guys some feedback as an audience? Are you OK with feedback? That was it. Just for those four people that hadn't heard that one yet, but the laugh makes it worthwhile. Thank you so much. This is interesting for me because I've only got 11 minutes to do this whole shtick. So anyway, they had a problem. They had 150 tribes in 15 countries to weave together into a single culture. So they created a new kind of cinema that would trick the brain into treating the data as if it were real, as if it were primary. And, and uh, so they created this thing called montage. I studied as my undergraduate work uh, Soviet montage theory and Soviet propaganda techniques, and I applied them to American high school media because it was so bad, the cut stuff that I was looking at when I was in high school. And, um, and my, I got a very good grade. It was my honors thesis, and I was told it was a failure. And the reason it was a failure is it turns out that the only kind of intelligence that movies impact, and not just movies, is mental health. There's motor skills, verbal skills, higher thinking, symbolic learning and mental health. But mental health is what takes in all of this data and is truly impacted by what the brain wants. And it dawned on me pretty early on, this is my 31st year in VR, that if we can begin to actually photorealistically represent reality to the point where the brain is tricked, and we're just about there already, we haven't even really gotten started yet, if we can really, you know, I know you're having a tough time to follow me, but you know, anyway, you're doing a great job. Uh, I'm just talking about the, the PowerPoints, then we could really change people's behaviors because when people process data as if it's real, what they're doing is they're looking at five to seven problems they have in their brain at any given time. We're receiving about 200 to 300 million bits a second of data, but the only data that we actually process is about 300 of it, 300 bits a second, is that which is relevant to our problems. And with VR, you're delivering so much information Increasingly photorealistically, there's a tremendous responsibility to understand the impact you're having when you're creating worlds that, that have a lot of integrity. So today, VR, AR, the new term I heard recently was XR. Anybody heard of XR? OK, so three of you. So maybe it'll be about six weeks from now. It was a, the first time I even saw it was about three weeks ago. XR is, X is VR, AR, MR, um, and everything else are all rolled into a single capacity. And I think, frankly, it's all media being integrated back into a single milieu that depends on what your, your, your content is, what the story is, 
How does he want to relate to people? All these things with value, with value will be absorbed into the mainstream. But for the tip of the society, you know, what we really have to worry about is what technology can really do to make a, make a difference in our lives. Kids love VR. They love being stimulated. That's kids of all ages. There's so many obvious applications here that are exhibited at this show. But what do you do with this, this, this content that can change the way people think when you start thinking about what the world needs, when you start thinking about the impact that's going to have on everybody's life as we move beyond head-mounted displays into more AR-like interfaces that allow you to see reality but also go back and forth, maybe do 360, do VR, AR, whatever you want, but basically is allowing you to see life at all times as well. So this, and remember, the technology is neither good nor bad. It depends on how you use it. So my personal choice for today when it comes to working with technology is to figure out what can I do to make, and what can we do to actually make the world a better place and to do so on an accelerated basis? What can we do to use technology to facilitate our humanness? Now, I recently was at a conference at, a, at an event called Ocean Elders, Mai Tai. And it had a bunch of very, a number of celebrities. Uh, uh, Richard Branson was there, Jackson Brown, a bunch of other folks. And they had a whole room dedicated to VR. I've never seen so many whale VR simulations. Uh, there were about, there were nine whale VR simulations there. People are trying to figure out what they can do that would be considered good and educational. But the bottom line is, what we need to do is we not, need to not think so much about the medium, we need to think about the message. What it is we want to communicate and figure out how best to communicate it. So, um, so you can do your great work and you need to do your great work and you need to continue to succeed raise your brand, raise your capacity to, to be employed and realize your dreams, but you also need to think about your life arc. What do you care about? Why are you on the planet? I'm basically a mental health and economic development educator by background. I do movies. My last big movie was Steve Jobs. Some of you looked at my bio. I've got a movie coming out with Akon uh, in a couple months called American King. I've got about 10 movies, three TV shows, one IMAX, and I'm doing negotiating VR and AR projects with some of the biggest music people in the world. But I will only do things that are entertainment, that will reach a lot of eyeballs, but also manifest good. And that's something you've got to think about in the back of your mind when you come to the point in your life where you want to sleep at night. Because the only way to really sleep well at night is to do what you're really supposed to be doing in life. And that's a hard thing to figure out. I'm interested in using VR and AR, AI, et cetera, et cetera, to create interfaces, one that I've already developed, that tells people their purpose and their, their meaning and what they're supposed to do and how to, how to exploit it, how to do it. And uh, one of the ways also to figure out what you really care about is to look at what the UN is doing right now. The UN, two years ago, did the biggest thing that they've ever done since they were founded about 80 years ago. They came up with something called the Sustainable Development Goals. How many people here have heard the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals? Only three of you. Believe it or not, the goal is to have two billion people know about the SDGs before this year is over. And people are working extremely fast to make that happen right now. And, all 193 countries signed the SDGs. And what they did without people actually knowing it is they bound every corporation in the world under those corporations also to embrace the SDGs. And, um, and I'm part of an organization, and Ari Eisenstadt who's sitting up front here filming us in VR is also part of it. And what we're doing right now is we're looking at different ways to, to encourage all the world's corporations to actually adopt the SDGs or uh, be exposed as not doing so. We've actually created an index that measures the degree to which through 10Q business plan, uh, annual report, and global media, large corporations, the largest corporations, are actually mentioning the SDGs. Interestingly, the world's largest corporations, who are the largest polluters, the largest users of natural resources. They're also the people and the entities that can actually do the most to save humanity. 63% of the world's thousand largest corporations are already talking about the SDGs in their annual reports. So they're already on top of this, which is really quite an amazing thing. Um, if you can move forward, you can see the SDGs. Those 17 goals, no poverty. It's not minimize poverty, it's eliminate poverty. It's not cleaner water, it's clean water. These 17 goals are the goals that by 2030, if every corporation in the world and every nation delivers 
we will have peace and prosperity for everybody. And things are moving very, very quickly. And the reason why I bring this up right now is not just to inspire you to find an SDG that you care about, that resonates with who you are and what your mission is, because I promise you, every one of you, even though you were not taught this, was born with a purpose and a contribution to the planet. It's to understand how to use these and promote these through the media you're doing. We have well over uh, $10 million of, SD, of uh, VR and AR money at the table right now, asking us to do projects that promote the SDGs. We have over $100 million at the table right now to do content that promotes the SDGs. There is money out there to find ways to embed this into the games that you're doing. You should look into it. Finally, um, I'm on the planet to help people realize why they're on the planet. I'm here as a VR, AR producer for many, many years to encourage you to consider service as part of making money, taking care of your family, and mostly overcoming the impossible, which I suspect drives nearly all of you. Uh, on that note, I'm going to stop and hope that there's time for me to have a few questions. Good, I'll ask you a question first. Oh, you're supposed to put up your hand, sorry. But do you have a question? You don't? Come on, go for it. Uh, Google 17 as Sustainable Development Goals or UNGSII.org. That's our thing. Um, I didn't put that up there. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, thank you for that. But VR, AR questions. I am here for the real reason. Um, I'm looking for, okay, please, thank you. What's that? Well, I, I thank you for that. I have two things. I created something called the Family Room in 1989, and it was a simulation game uh, using AI to basically uh, to trigger the progression of human behavior uh, for each of us as we, as we had certain stimulus within the families. There were three menus, defining the characters, defining their inner relationships with each other, and then an external uh, menu which triggers an external event that, that changes the family ecology. And then I've developed a tool called 17 Questions, which is a mythological evaluation tool where I have 17 questions that span your dreams, intelligences, issues from childhood, job experience, et cetera. I aggregate that data and I interpolate it into a single one minute overarching mythology, which tells you why you're on the planet, what your purpose is, and how to execute. I've done that over a thousand times for people in the White House, billionaires, spies, celebrities, hundreds and hundreds of CEOs. Only my father didn't love it. But that's another story. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, I have not even migrated that to code yet, but I'm working on it. Um, it looks like we only have a limited amount of time, so what is my purpose? What is your, you, shall I tell you that? Yeah, I want Knowing to. nothing about you, but seeing you're a good looking guy, you're an ex-athlete, you're stretching, but you've got enough self-esteem to ask, I would say that you're going to probably end up as a CEO. I don't know if you have your MBA yet, and it's really important for you to generate as much revenue as you can, figure out what your purpose is, and, and come out with it on your shoulder, on your sleeve, because you're gonna find out, I find out in the movie industry, when I do a movie, a $5 million movie, that's about the rising oceans, which is one of my movies, I will get the DiCaprio or somebody to cut their, 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 fund, their, their fees by 90% in order to be part of the movie. You'll find out when you start becoming cause-related in your life, you're gonna attract different people, but very good people. And if you're not married yet, it's a good way to find your wife. People that are philanthropic, tend to be very generous, and they're good cooks, too. I'm only kidding. I just made that up. Please, you. Go ahead. Ask me a question. You guys don't learn if you don't engage. Please. He's the best thing that ever happened to all of us, believe me. There is so much anger that Trump has caused because of what he's doing right now that it's unbelievable the people that are coming out saying, what can I do? I can write checks. I can do anything. So in a way, it's a positive. We have to remember this is all Darwin unfolding. But, do, you know, but VR, AR questions. I've been doing, my first big movie was The Lawnmower Man. Not, not two, unless there's no more questions. And I'd like to take one more question from a, from a stranger, although we're all related. Go ahead. Have you applied for funding for one of those, uh, for AR, VR solutions? Have I applied for funding from whom? Just Google. I mean, HTC just put $10 million out explicitly for applications dedicated to the SDGs. They closed that deal about a month ago. It's out there. You just got to look. Go ahead. My company is making a Pokemon Go type game, and I want to get players points if they volunteer for local charities. Do you think that will work? And any advice? Yes. 
uh, come in and ask me for my card and do follow up, and we'll talk. I'll plug you into 100 million kids. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, David.